excited you are here with us today. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Woohoo! Look, Kaylin and Chris is here with little Silas. Oh, we're so glad you're here. The new baby's here. How's everybody doing? Good? Are y'all ready to worship the King of Kings? Man. All right, here we go. Hallelujah. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Sing it with me. Oh, oh, bring all your failures, bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. Yes, with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us. His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. And I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the world. Yes, he did. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise him. Praise him. From the wonders of his love. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow, praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love, His amazing love. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save. For God so loved the world. That he gave us his one and only son to save whoever believes in him will live forever yes he will the power of hell forever defeated now it is well and i'm walking in freedom for god so loved God so loved the world. Yes. Yes, he loved the world. Bring all your failures. Bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Aren't you glad he loved us so much that he gave his one and only son? Amen. You can be seated. Please watch our screens. Welcome to Bayou Blue Assembly. Listen closely to hear about our upcoming events. Do you like kettle popcorn? 
while our great kids are supporting BGMC in their efforts to build a basketball court in Tanzania, Africa. You can order a bag of popcorn from any great kid now until April 30th. Thank you for partnering with us and helping us teach our children to love missions. Tomorrow night, we'll be having our Churches United prayer meeting right here at Bible Assembly at 7 p.m. Come gather with us and our local churches as we pray for our community. This Friday morning, we're having a church work day at our storage units on Grand Caillou. We're gonna be moving all of our stuff from those units to the ones here on the church property. If you are able to, we would love to have your help. Covenant Church is having their annual Aspire Women's Conference this Friday. Doors open at 6.30 with the service at 7. Registration will be at the door and you can see Pastor Janet for more information. This Friday between 6 and 9 p.m., Pastor Alyssa will be hosting a movie night for all of our youth girls. They're gonna have popcorn and ice cream. So if you're a girl between the ages of 14 and 18, come join them for a time of fun. And for our youth guys, while the girls are having their movie night, we're gonna be having a game night in the youth room. So go ahead, you can come out and have fun with us as well. Hi Bayou Blue family, we are so excited that we get to announce a new series on Sunday nights that is called The Celebration of Spiritual Discipline. And that <laughs> is going to be on our foundations for who we are our walk with Christ. Yeah. If you're a new believer, yes, or be absolutely. Great. Or, and, and even if you're not, if you're a seasoned believer, this is definitely something to walk through as well. Great thing for walking yeah. through and for your whole family. Yes. So we have handouts for the adults, we have handouts for the kids. And after the kids um, do their handout during service, they're able to turn it in after for a prize. So that'd be fun. <laughs> absolutely. And our SUM students are going to be partnering with our staff, yes. pastors, Super and we're excited. going to be a tag team preaching yes, together, absolutely. teaching together. Yes. So it's a new series going to yes. be right here on Sunday nights, yes. starting this Sunday this night. Sunday, yes. We will also have worship. We're not yes. going to leave that out. We're going to pray for people, lay yeah. hands on people that need yeah. it. We love doing that. Yeah. And each week we're going to have um, different things. We're going to have videos. We're going to have object lessons. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be about prayer, praise, just our foundation, yes. reading your word. Absolutely. Solitude. Inward, outward, and corporately. How do we align ourselves to be more like Christ? So join us right here at 6 p.m. this coming Sunday night for our new series called The Celebration of Spiritual Discipline. Hope to see you. never remember the name of it the title of it <laughs> it's funny watching myself up there but it's going to be great tonight we're going to switch it up a little bit too we're going to sing a song and then we're going to get right into the teaching and preaching and then we're going to be doing worship and praying for people so tonight if you're having questions about the bible and why we believe what we believe and all these things come tonight tonight's going to be kind of an introductory of what we're going to be doing pastor is still going to be uh, preaching a little bit, so you don't want to miss tonight at 6 p.m., all right? Also, don't forget, you can give your tithe and your offering. Love giving online. Always give online now. It's so easy. Or you can give in our baskets here. If you've got an offering to give, you can give, uh, especially at this time when I'm going to say, let's greet each other, right? How many of y'all know what pastor's been preaching on these past couple of weeks? Anybody? Faith. That's right. So, some of y'all going to know this song and say, oh, I remember that song. And some of y'all going to say, this is a brand new song for me. So I went back and we're going to walk by faith this morning. So stand with us, turn around and greet someone and get ready to walk by faith. Every step I take is a 
step of faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every prayer I make is a prayer of faith. If my God is for me, tell me who can be against me. we take every step I take is a step of faith no weapon formed against me shall prosper every prayer I make is a prayer of faith come on and if my God is for me tell me who can trust in you yes I do yes I walk by faith each step by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you I put my trust in you yeah I put my trust in you I put my trust I told him this morning, if we were singing that song in Africa, we'd be having a lion dance, wouldn't we, Miss Carla? <laughs> That's how they worship. They worship and they dance all over the building. <laughs> Amen. If we had time, we'd be doing that one more time. <laughs> Amen. I mean, even though God is faithful and he is true, and when we trust him, he's going to bring us through it. Amen. No matter what you're going through today, if you'll begin to praise Him and worship Him, raise your hallelujah to Him today, He's going to work it out because that's what He does. If you fix your eyes on Jesus, He'll work it out. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Yes, it is. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Everything inside of me, I raise a hallelujah. Now I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost 
your hold on me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, why? Cause my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, cause heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder. And he was not there. I know Easter Sunday was a while ago, but guess what? We still celebrate that our king is alive. Can you imagine Mary, the women running, saying, he's alive. He's not there. Hallelujah. See, our God is not of God that is man-made of stone and wood. <laughs> no, our God is. He's alive, and He lives inside of me, and He lives inside of you if you know Him. Hallelujah. And we have this promise that He is faithful if you trust Him. Julio, it's so good to see you today. If you trust Him, He's faithful, isn't He? He's faithful. If you trust Him, He's faithful. He's a God of promises. And whatever promise that he has made to you, you hold on to it. And you claim it. And don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the negative. You hold on to your promise. Because he's faithful. Hallelujah. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, the faithful promises. And time and time again, 
you have proven you'll do just what you say though the storms may come and the winds may blow i'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to pass great is your faithfulness to me yes great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same i will praise your name great is your faithfulness to You're the God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same, yeah. Your history can prove, there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast, and let my heart learn when you speak. A word it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Yes. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting, same I will your name great is your faithfulness to me yeah. come on sing these words I put my faith I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down, no. I put my faith in Jesus, yes, my anchor to the ground. him this morning. Lift your hands all over this place. I still bless you. Oh yes. I still bless you. I still bless you. Hallelujah. I still bless you in the middle of my trial. 
trial I still bless you in the middle of my storm I still bless you in the hospital room I still bless you when it's going not going my way I still bless you every hour of my day I still bless you every day of my life I still with every breath that I breathe From the rising sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. may be seated. Oh, we had a great time at Angola Thursday. Sister Janet preached, and man, made me so mad. <laughs> she sings better than me, and I think she preaches as good as me. She preached on, I thought she was going to get us thrown out of there to start off with AJ. First thing she says is, I'm about to give y'all some weapons the guards can't take from y'all. You know, guards start putting their hands on their guns and stuff. I said, yeah, oh, my goodness. She talked about our praise and how we can affect the situations around us. Amen. That the enemy cannot take what belongs to us because God keeps it with us. Amen. Amen. If y'all open your Bibles to Hebrews 12, we'll be there in just a minute. Those of you who've been able to make all of the different uh, uh, parts, we've been, uh, this is part four or five of Five things about faith you need to know. The first one was, faith is not a lack of problems. Come on, somebody. You ain't got great faith because you ain't never been through something. You have great faith because you've been through it and you've hung on to God. Amen. Part two was, how do I get faith that will lead me to God? We went through the different things and there were several things that we did. The third last week was, faith must be connected to an action. People that talk about it ain't getting it done, amen? You have to connect it to an action. And today, we're talking about faith does not look at the path. It looks at the finish line. See, we have to to learn that that there are so many paths that we would like to take. Most of us want to take the path that's easiest, right? We want the one that's not quite as much resistance so that we can get where we're going with the little effort as we have to. But that's not how serving God works. 
Amen. God leads us down paths that, that are of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Many of us have to learn that, that the path that God leads you on has not everything to do with you. Some of it has to do with him. He wants you to get to a certain place so that he can use the life that he purchased with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, so that you can be a witness to the people around you of the faithfulness of God. Come on, y'all. God's faithfulness is there, and sometimes you're just going to have to go through a fight. Get to the other side so people can see that serving God may not be the easiest thing, but it's the right thing. You know, it, it took me a few years after I got saved to get a lot of my stuff together. You know what I mean? My language, my attitude, my desires, none of those things. When I, when I became a Christian, my, I didn't just pop over into, hey, I'm a, now I'm a Pentecostal preacher, I'm good. No, I had to begin to walk a pathway that God led me down because there were things in me that had to come out. You know, I, I don't care to remember how many times I said something I shouldn't have said and had to repent and make it right with God. I can't tell you how many times I got mad because things didn't go the way I wanted them to go and instead of trusting God, I got mad at God. Hmm get more organs up here. Sometimes we just have to realize, yeah, when you get saved, it's not an instantaneous, everything's going to be perfect, but it's a process that now I have entered into the pathway that God has for me, and now I have to begin to learn to walk where God wants me to walk. But the first thing that I learned about following God is if I take my eyes off of him, I'm going to get lost. It says in Hebrews 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Father, touch the heart of those that are here. Let me speak the word that you have given to me. Help me, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. Two things I want you to look at, right? The end of, chapter, of, of verse 12, verse 1, chapter 12, it says, the race that is set before who? Us, all of us have a race that is set before us. And the Bible says that Jesus had to finish his race. And how did he finish it? It was the joy set before him, right? So if I'm going to be set on a race, everybody in this room is not running the race from the same place. We're not all in the same place in our faith. We're not all in the same place with our experience. We're not all in the same place with our struggles. Some of y'all are going through more junk than somebody else might be. Some of us are, are coming from deeper holding sin than, than others. Some might have been raised in church and, and maybe you got off in just a little bit of something. And, and while others who are, were, were raised in, in just the pure pit of hell and you've come up and that's what you said, man, your normal was junk. Your normal was really, really bad stuff. And, and, and for you not getting high every day is a great success because you were just messed up. We're just not all coming from the same place. Some of us, were, we, we, we had people that loved us and guided us growing up. Others had people that slapped us and pushed us around growing up. It's just not always the same. And so we have to run the race that is set before us. You have to run what God has set you in for. And how do I do that? It's because I look to the joy that is set before me. I'm not looking from the day to day, all the junk. Come, come on, y'all. There is always something in your life that is going to stumble you up if you're looking for it. You're always going to find that thing that, that you can say to other people. Yeah, but look how hard this is. But see, when I'm looking to Jesus, I'm not looking at this. 
As long as my eyes are on God, I begin to step around these things and, and I'm letting God guide me. I'm letting God lead me. And yes, it's hard and it's difficult, but I have to look to the end of why I'm doing what I'm doing. See, if you're looking from situation to situation, how are you ever going to find that it's worth it? Come on. I mean, sometimes it just doesn't feel worth it. I'm giving up too much. It's just hurt. It hurts too bad. If this is all there is, I can't make it. But if I'm looking over here for that joy that is set before me, Jesus didn't look at the suffering and the pain of the cross. He looked on the other side of the cross. He saw you and he saw me. And he said, it's worth me dying this way because the only hope they have is my death. The only hope humanity has is that I give up my life for them. And so for that joy, he endured the shame of the cross. You see, you've got to put your eyes beyond the circumstance if you want to have the strength to get through it. Because you may not have come to it yet, but if you stay in Christ long enough, you're going to come to a battle that's not going to feel like it's worth it. You're going to feel like I might as well quit. I might as well give up. There's just, I mean, look at all, all I can see is the struggle. All I can see is the pain. But y'all, I got to keep my eyes up just a little bit elevated above that mess. I have to look like Jesus did at, at, at the joy that was set before me. And you know how I do that? Because the same way I receive faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We see that. Faith comes through experience with God. Faith comes from asking. Asking God. We, we, we build up our most holy faith, right? Praying in the Holy Ghost. I begin to, to draw inside of me what wasn't there. I begin to grow in my, my trust in God because I'm going through situations. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's, there's a time inside of me that I didn't know what to do. And I, I went into a battle, but, but as I went into the battle, I, I trusted God. I, I had patience and I hung on. Oh, it wasn't easy to hang on. Come on, y'all. It wasn't easy to be able to say, I'm going to keep going here. I was being attacked, and, and I was being, being frustrated by life because life can frustrate you. Your kids can frustrate you. Your spouse can frustrate you. Your job can frustrate you. God can frustrate you. <laughs> because God's going to push you beyond you. And you have to learn in this process, I'm going to hang on. What is it I believe? If it's worth believing in, don't let go. Jesus is worth hanging on to. And it's in that process that we begin to grow. I'm, I'm walking down this road, and, and I'm, I'm steady pushing forward, and it doesn't seem like I'm, I'm seeing anything happen. It looks like for every time I move forward, I'm beginning to be pushed back just a little bit. And we, we think, well, maybe I'll just turn and go the other way. It looks like that's, that's easier. My, Joshua has a tattoo in his arm. Only dead fish float downstream. How, how's it go? Only dead fish go with the flow. Live fish got to go against it. I, 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 I haven't studied his tattoos. I've studied the Bible. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, so we, we bring ourselves, though, into this understanding that, that, that just because it's easy doesn't mean you need to go that way. Sometimes you need to, to bow up and, 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 and push yourself beyond you because you believe that there is a heaven waiting. I'm looking for, for the joy that's out there, that, that I know that if I hold on to God, he's going to get me through this. You know how I know that? Because I hung on to him last time, and I got through that. Amen? It's because I have this experience with God, and it's that experience that gives me the hope to keep stepping forward. Amen? And in and, and the Bible, nowhere in the Word of God do we see how it is going to be easy to follow God. We, the indication it's not going to be easy is when he says to take up your cross and follow him. Amen. Prepare to crucify your flesh. How many of y'all know that's, that, that doesn't sound pleasant? But, but it's the process, why I do it is because I know that where I am is killing me. I know that what I've been doing ain't working. 
And so I have to step outside of myself in my comfort zone and all the things that I've been taught and I've got to pick up the Bible and I've got to begin to read it and say, if the Bible says this is true, then I've got to hold on to it. And the world says, yeah, but look at it. You don't see how that's going to take place, do you? I don't. But you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm not responsible for making it look right. I'm not even responsible to get to the place and it be what God said it was. My responsibility is to step toward that, is to continue to believe what God said. And so as I'm, as I'm doing this and, and I'm walking this pathway, I'm aware that there is a, a, a great compass of, of, of witnesses there are people who are, are watching in, the, in this world, in the world to come, and they're watching the struggles, they're watching the battles. There are lost people who are watching the church, and there are, are hurting, struggling people that are looking over and saying, hey, let's see, let's see if it's true. Let's see if what they're saying they really believe. You know how the world knows if we really believe what we're saying? We're going to do it. If we're not doing what the Bible said do, then I have a hard time believing that you really believe it. When people say they believe in hell and they live like that, then how do, I, how do you really believe in that if you know you're going to spend eternity in suffering and punishment, yet you continue in the same lifestyle? You don't really believe you're going to go to hell. We, we, we think there's going to be some kind of a way out of that and, and God is going to going to miraculously let everybody go to heaven, but that's not what the book teaches. And so I have to pick that up and read that. And so here's this process that, that we understand that, that, that I'm not ashamed of, of, of my faith because uh, I've seen God do many things. When I tell people God can set you free from drugs and alcohol and, and perverseness, and people say, well, how do you know that? <laughs> because I've been set free from it. Now, now I, want, I want to clarify, when I say God set me free, I do not mean he took the desire and the want to away from me, right? Come on, y'all. See, people think, well, they said that they got delivered and didn't want to do it anymore, and, and that, that ain't my experience. God touched me, but boy, I sure want to do it. Huh? God didn't say you were not going to have to have a battle. You want a victory, there's going to be a fight. You want to see, you want to conquer hell and death. Well, you better get ready for a fight because hell and death ain't going away except you fight it away. You got to make a decision that, that what I was, I don't want to be. So what am I going to do about it? I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to set myself toward where God has me going. And I'm going to keep walking and keep fighting. Why? Because he is the author and the finisher of my faith. That means he initiated faith in me. None of us got saved of our own accord. We couldn't have even believed except God gave us the faith to believe. And then... We can't make it happen. God is the finisher. He wants us to take care of the middle stuff. He wants you, if you fail, anybody here ever fail since you've been saved? Some honest people, some not so honest. You know what? The thing is, you don't give up. You get up. Too many people fall down and stay down and they blame God because, well, it ain't my fault, God, I tried. Okay, you tried and failed. Now get up and try again. You know, here's the deal. If they were telling you, hey, if you can walk across this right here, we're going to give you anything you want, man. You, you name it, it's yours. You just got to get across there. And you stumbled and failed the first time. You go home and quit? <laughs> no. -uh. You go get up and fight because it's what you want. You got something waiting on the other side. I mean, they talk about a, a crawfish pie sitting there waiting on you. You know, got you some crab and shrimp egg rolls. I mean, sitting there. All you got to do is get across here and it's yours. I stumble and fall. They say, well, am I disqualified? Oh, no, no, no. You just get them try again. We here all day. Because I ain't going to stop because I want that. I got that porterhouse steak, medium rare. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to get that thing. Because I want it. See, when you want something bad enough, you won't quit because it's hard. 
You will do what it takes to get there because it matters to you. Well, let me tell you something. Heaven ought to matter to us. Getting to where God is should matter to the church. And so it's my responsibility to do what God told me to do. And that means when I fall down, I get back up. I say, God, I'm sorry. Help me, strengthen me, empower me, and I get back into the fight. See, we can't be beat unless we quit. That's just the truth about it. And so I, here I am moving forward, but, but what happens so often is what happened to Peter. In Matthew 14, 28, it says, And Peter answered him, saying, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter was come down out of the ship and walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink and cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, caught him, and said unto him, Thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? See, there, there's our issue. We step out by faith and we start walking after God. I mean, we're doing good. We're going to church. We're reading our Bible. We're doing all the right things. But then we take our eyes off Jesus. Then we start looking at the stuff around us. It's some jagged rocks over here. And that's hard. What if I cut my foot on them rocks? I don't want to go that way. Well, these rocks got slime on. If I start down there, I must trip and fall. I don't know if I ought to go that way. And, and it looks too deep right here in the middle. And, and I just don't know if I can make it around here. And so we take our eyes off Jesus and we start thinking, well, I think if I go back, maybe there's a way around all this. And God says, I didn't lead you around this valley. I led you through it. There's a reason that I'm bringing you here. There's a problem inside of you that you have to overcome. God wouldn't let Israel take a shortcut into the promised land, but he sent them the long way. And the Bible says at least they came into battle and became discouraged. Boy, sounds like us, huh? We get into battles and we become discouraged. Things didn't go the way I thought they should go. Anybody here ever figured God out? You thought you did, though, didn't you? And it didn't work out that way. We thought, well, God, you'll do this, and this will happen, and this will be so great. And God says, no, nah, we're going to go another way. And I've seen so many shipwrecked people sitting on the side of, of, of life going to me, you know, Pastor, I tried all that. God let me down. And I said, oh, no, no, no. God didn't let you down. Let's get back down to the truth of it. God told you to do something and you said no. And you said, God, you change your mind and then I'll do this. And we tried to keep on doing what we was doing. So we're going to follow our walk with God. We're just going to do it our way. And then we fall flat on our faces and then we think, God, you should have done something. He did. He told you not to. How many of y'all understand that when God tells us to go one way, he doesn't give us the option to go whatever we want to. It's called the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. Too often we think they're negotiable with God, and they're not. God's commandments and God's callings are for us to follow him the way he said. And you can say, well, you know, pastor, it's hard. How many of y'all will, will, will admit to it being hard? Okay, good. Thank y'all. I hate it to be just me that's having a tough time. It's hard to do what God calls us to do. It's a difficult path to, to, to take up my cross and follow after God. And, and when God brings conviction on me and says, don't. It's hard for me not to when I want to. It really is. It's when when I, I have desires and, and wants and, and when, I, when I first got saved, my, my old nature was still real strong in a lot of areas. And, and as I would read the Bible and, and I'd hear messages preached, God would say, hey, I want you to pay attention to this. You need to do this. And I'd say, oh, but God, that's hard. I mean, I've already come so far. Anybody ever feel, I mean, I, I quit drinking and cussing and sleeping around with crazy women. I mean, I, mean, I did so many things and, and I thought, but God, you just ain't never enough for you. 
I, I felt that way because I wanted to hang on to some of the fun. Because I thought, this is what helps me get through life. And God said, yeah, but I don't want you to depend on that. I want you to depend on me. I want you to come to me when you need something. I don't want you to run to something temporary. I want you to run to something eternal. And I didn't understand that because I only wanted the pleasure of the flesh for a season. I just want to get through this season, this this moment, this battle, this, this struggle. God, I just want to get through this. And maybe going back a little bit to my old nature will give me the relief I need for this moment. That's why a lot of people fall back into it. Oh, they don't intend to go back there to stay. <laughs> no, 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 just a moment. I just, I, just, I just can't deal with this right now. So I'm, I'm going to give in just for a moment. Then I'm going to get back where I need to be, and I'm, I'm going to get back on track. It just doesn't work that way, does it? Some of y'all going, I don't even know what you're talking about. I ain't never done drugs. I ain't never drank. Well, let's talk about eating. Most of us can relate. Now, some of you skinny people in here ain't got a clue, but it's okay. (laughs) Y'all got other issues. (laughs) They got other issues. I'm just going to, you know, we're going to stay off of them. But it is. You know, there's those times when when we just, anybody here besides me stress eat? Y'all probably been in a lot of stress lately. (laughs) Stress stress, eating is a real thing. And the more stress you're under, the more you desire to go in and eat. And I don't know why it is, Brother Joe, why is it that when we stress eat, it's never healthy food? I never stress eat celery. <laughs> never in my life have I done stress eating with celery. I don't know why that is. My body just didn't geared that way, I guess some of you skinny people might say. I had to stop, I was on my third stick, and I just had to say, whoo, that's enough. But there's a battle that we go through that's a struggle. It's a real struggle. And sometimes we, we want to take that shortcut back to where we were. We just, we just want that relief. But what God's doing is he said, I want you to keep your eyes on me. When everything starts getting dark, don't you take your eyes off me. I'll be the only place there's light. Don't you turn, if you turn your head, it's going to be real disorienting and you're going to be easy to fall away from where I want you to be. Don't don't let that happen to you. Keep your eyes here because when you're looking at me, I'm guiding you. Uh, You don't have to worry. You listen to my voice and my voice will guide you. And when you're struggling, you can say, Jesus, I need you. And immediately, he's there. Immediately, he grabs you. You don't have to, to, to give in to the old nature, but you're going to have to keep your eyes on God. You can't look at the boisterousness of the, of the struggle. Y'all, we, we've gone through some, some struggles in our, in our community, in our church, in our families with COVID. You know, COVID, I think, was blown out of proportion, but it still killed people, huh? My younger brother died of COVID. But you know what God reminded me? People died the year before that, too. Before we ever saw COVID, people died. People are going to die when they quit talking about COVID. People die. They die, they get sick, and they die. Some people die healthy. Some people just die. My mom had to go. She was going to be here this morning, and she had to go back home. One of the matriarchs of the church she had worked on staff at passed away. And she was really sad. She said, I'm just so sad that she died. I said, how old was she, Mama? Well, 92. I said, yeah it's, uh, yeah, it's sad she's gone, but praise God, you know, she's in heaven. She had been struggling with health. But you know what? She hadn't been sick until the very end. She had a great life. You know, Mr. Arthur, about how do you remember the Arthur? How old are you? 90 what? 92. He drove here. And, y'all, and, he ain't, and he ain't the one you got to worry about on the highway. It's the rest of them young guys. <laughs> Mr. Arthur takes his time, gets where he's going to go. But, but he's healthy, does good, looks good. You ain't got to die sick. You have a great life. But you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. 
you got to keep moving toward God. And, and that's this, this struggle. Some people die way too young. Some people die too, too long. <laughs> Some people are around a little bit longer than they should have been. You know, like Hitler and people like that. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't getting me. Do you believe that picture said? But you know what? The truth of the matter is, if I keep my eyes on Jesus, I can keep going where I'm going. This is part of that process. I love what Paul says to Timothy in Timothy 4, 6. He says, for I am ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You know, this is, this is the process that, that we're looking at as Paul is, is coming to what he understands is the end of his life. He says, you know what? I'm ready. I fought good fights. How many of y'all know what a good fight is? It's not just a fight you win. Obviously, if you lose the fight, it's not a very good one. But if you just winning the fight, don't make it a good fight either. But you know what's not a good fight? A good fight is uh, it's not when somebody comes to church and doesn't look like you and you try to change them before they get in. That's not a good fight. That's a fight that's going to get you in trouble with Jesus. You know, well, I've seen people come to church over the years, and, and, and the more they look different from everybody else, it seems the more people kind of look and want, want to wonder, I wonder where they're coming from. It, it brings joy to my heart that uh, it's been, been a while back, it was before COVID, and they had somebody showed up, they'd never been here before, and they, they came into the church and uh, asked one of our secretaries, said, can I ask y'all a question? They said, sure. Would you think it'd be okay if me and my girlfriend came to church here? They said, well, of course. Well, we just, and they started pulling up, showing their tattoos, you know. All these, and they just laughed. said, you never met our pastor's son, have you? <laughs> said, no. Nah. said, well, he got more tattoos than you. Don't worry about it. We don't care about that. Some people come in, and they got some crazy hair. <laughs> I'm not even talking about colors. <laughs> people with spiked hair and and and. and Half the head shaved, other half long hair, you know, and, 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 and people go, oh, my goodness, you know, why, why we do that? I mean, hair ain't nothing. Hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> we got some folks with lots of hair, some folks wish they had any hair. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Hair's not a big deal. They come with piercings across. Now, I don't know how they do it because they got to hurt. Face piercings, head piercings, tongue piercings. You know, they say that you can lose your taste. <laughs> Instant no for me. I ain't taking no chance. I like food. I might lose weight if I, I don't know anyway. But they come and, and they don't look like us. And, and instead of us celebrating that God is sending us people who aren't as dull and boring as us, and he's sending us people that, that, that need Jesus and love. We ought to celebrate that. We don't hold them in the back till they beat them, Jesus into them and they look like us. We want them to come in here and add to us their worship and their praise and their experience because that's what the church is about. It's a melting pot of everybody from everywhere coming to Jesus. Some of y'all have a hard time going to foreign countries with people who have different cultures. They, you know, they gauge their ears. And they're so long that they can flip them over the top. And I'm going to be honest, sometimes I look. I, that's pretty impressive that they were able to get their ear down to here, you know. But, you know, those are not the gauges upon which we look at church and, and people that, that have all this has gone on in their lives because that's all they knew. It's my job to, to walk the path that God called me to walk and to love the people along the path. It's to show them the love of God, the love of Christ, to, to fight good fights. When someone tries to 
diminish the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's a fight worth having. When somebody says to somebody around you, oh, you can get to heaven any way you want to, many ways to heaven. No, there's not. There's one, the Bible said so. There is one name under heaven and earth whereby man must be saved, and that's Jesus. That's a fight worth having. When people tell you, oh, no, you, you, you're not going to be able to do it unless you line up to this set of rules. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, whosoever believeth on me and, and, and confesses with me with their uh, my mouth, believes in their heart and confesses me to be Lord, I'll save them. He didn't say you had to look a certain way to get saved. He'll save you no matter what you look like. But he loves you too much to leave you in the mess that you're in when he finds you. But he doesn't bring condemnation. He brings a celebration a celebration that a soul that was lost is now saved. A soul that was in bondage is now set free. That's what the church does. Those are the fights worth fighting. Not, well, did you do it this way or that way? Oh, you got saved wearing blue jeans? You ain't saved. <laughs> Foolishness. Those aren't good fights. That's foolishness. It causes people to fall away from God. Y'all, we're too close to the end. Don't quit. <laughs> Don't let go of truth now. Don't let the enemy win now. It says he finished his course. <laughs> They're making fun. I'm tongue-tied. They make fun of me. I ain't offended. Amen. Finish your course. What is that? That's the path, the race. That's where God called you. I'm, I'm not looking at the course. I'm looking at the conclusion. I'm keeping my eyes on the joy that is set before me, not the struggle that I'm going through. I'm going to keep my faith. Y'all, sometimes the only thing going to get you through where you add is your faith. Not another human being is going to be able to help you. Because you're going to be in a place that you're going to have to reach out and get a hold of your faith. It's going to be a situation where everybody's going to tell you what they think. And you're going to have to decide what you believe. There have been times in, in my walk with God that I've really struggled. And, and, and here, you know, over this last part of our life, I, I, I live in a glass house. So I don't have secrets. My, my, my uh, daughter laughs at me because she's, you know, and my kids, they'll say, Daddy, please don't share this. I mean from the pulpit. And I tell them if it's my story to tell, I'm telling. And if it's about you only, I, don't have, I may not, but you drug me into it, it's mine to tell. <laughs> but y'all, this, this, this stretch we've gone through, COVID didn't, didn't stumble me up too much. We were back up and running. We're about 850 when I'd have hit. But well, I'd have kicked me in the back of the head. I wouldn't expect an Ida to be Ida. I thought she was going to be I. But boy, she brought the duh. <laughs> she came on complete, didn't she? Just brought it. I drove up here to the church thinking, well, it's okay. We'll use our church as a place for people to gather. Whoo! I walked in that back door, y'all. I'm walking up that aisle, and my heart is just sunk. Oh, great man of faith, I was not. I remember thinking, oh my goodness, 30 years of my life, I have poured into this and look at it, it's nothing. It's gone. I, where do you even begin? Man, this whole front of the roof was gone. Rain, water everywhere. Our chairs were wet. They had ceiling tiles spread everywhere. Uh, insulation was spread. And I, I, I'm telling you, I said, God, the church is so messed up. Coming into the church, metal everywhere. And about the third time I said, man, the church. God said, you're the church and you're okay. Stop it. I said, oh, snap. I said, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> and so I quit complaining about the church. Then I, we called and made sure all of our people were okay. None of our people were lost. And God said, I took care of the church. This building can be repaired. And I'm going to tell you, I went through some process looking, and, and we had contractors that lied to us. I had lawyers that lied to us. I had insurance agents that lied to us. 
And I remember I was really struggling. I really was. I, I was trying to keep my faith and trying to stay positive. And, and I just thought to myself, I'm, being, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be so honest with y'all right now. I really thought I'm a, I was gonna have to start my prison ministry over from inside. Because <laughs> I was about there. I, I, I hate to be lied to. And, and one of them called me a liar. Without using the words, you liar, he called me a liar. Boy, and I, I stepped toward him. I did. And I caught myself. I said, you better not. <laughs> you whip that little dude, they'll be mad at you. And I, 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 not y'all, please. Y'all would have y'all forgiven me. We, we'd have thrown up. Yeah, we'd have thrown hands. I, I told him I didn't mind playing catch if he didn't mind catching. <laughs> so, but, you know, hey, over here, I, I began to pray, God. I don't know what I'm going to do. This is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. And God said, I gave you the vision before the storm. I told you what I was going to do here before COVID. I told you where we were going to go before Ida. I wasn't wrong. Now, you either believe me or you don't. And I stood up and I said, okay, Jesus, we're about to build us a bigger sanctuary. We're going to grow back. We're going to finish this, and then we're going to build the next one. And every time they would say to me, hey, you want to change this? I said, nope, build it like it was. We'll put all those changes in the new building we're going to build after we get back in our building because God gave me the vision. He gave me the plan, and I will not allow the enemy to get me to look off from Jesus. But I focus back on the cross. I focus back on my Jesus, and I haven't looked to the left. I haven't looked to the right. I am focusing on where I am at that moment moment. My feet are here. I see the situations that need to be done. I'm going to deal with them, but I'm not taking my eyes off the destination that God called this church to get to. I have kept the faith. I have kept my faith. I have kept my belief. I know that God has me and he's going to bring me to where I need to be, even though at times it looks impossible. In Romans 4, 17, it says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his body, now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that he who had promised he was able also to perform. Wow. Abraham hoped against hope. That means when there was nothing to hope on, he hoped anyway. Why? Because he had a word from God. Hey, anybody got a promise from God? You hold on to that hope. Don't you let the devil come steal your hope because it doesn't look like. It looks like it's too late. It looks like it's gone too far. It looks like it's beyond anything positive can happen and I might as well give up. Everybody keeps telling me I need to just give up and go on. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says that Abraham believed when there was no reason to believe. He believed because God told him, God promised him, and he believed that God was faithful. To do what he said he would do. Y'all, that is what walking by faith is. That, that's what's finishing this walk. I, I'm going to hang on. Not because I see it. Not because I understand it. But because God's word said it. That's where we got to come to. All of us have to. You need to know that about faith. You got to take your eyes off all the junk going on. Because it'll never look like you're going to win if you keep looking at it. You will keep saying to yourself, I just don't see how God can do this. I just don't see how this is going to happen. I just don't understand what God can do here. You don't have to understand how God is. You just need to trust God will. The hardest thing for me to grasp in the kingdom of God is his sovereignty. We say it all the time, our God is a sovereign God, and he is. But it's one of the hardest things for me to grasp that if God decides it's time for something to happen, if God decides I'm going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I don't want nowhere near it, 
but God leads me into it, then I need to go through it in faith. If I pray for somebody to be healed and they're not healed, I need to trust that God is on the throne and God knows what is best. And even though I don't understand it, I trust God in it. That's how Paul kept the faith. Can I promise you, Paul didn't understand why he had to be beat with a whip. Paul didn't understand why they let him loose and let a bunch of animals try to kill him. Paul didn't understand why he had to be shipwrecked. Paul didn't understand why his own countrymen were trying to kill him because he believed that Jesus was the Messiah. He didn't like all of that. He didn't understand why all that had to happen. But this one thing he did, forgetting those things that were behind, he pressed forward toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And can I tell y'all, for me as a human being, the hardest thing to do is to just say, okay, God, not my will, thy will be done. But I know that if I don't do that, I'm not going to find strength. I'm not going to find hope. I'm not going to find the ability to go through day after day after day. But when I surrender my will to God's will, then I know I'm going to be okay. I know that I'm going to make it because faithful is he who called me. Y'all, he's faithful. And I know that it's difficult. I don't pretend that following God is an easy thing that, oh, just trust, just trust, just trust. The truth is you got to trust. But it's hard to just trust when you can't see how it's benefiting, when you can't see the end of it. And you're walking in that path and you're, you're thinking just, but look at all this stuff. And when, when you had people that, that you felt like you could depend on and they, they stepped outside of the picture and now they're not even there. And you wonder, I, I can't make it alone. Y'all, you're never alone. God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. You're not alone. God didn't leave you to, to the enemy. He's right there. He's waiting on you to reach out to where he is and to call his name. What happened to Peter the minute he said, Jesus, save me? The Bible says immediately Jesus was there to grab him. Jesus didn't have to come back off vacation. Jesus didn't have to, oh, hang on. I forgot about you over here. Immediately he grabbed his hand and he pulled him back up and they walked together back to the boat. Y'all, the problem is we're going under and we're not crying out to Jesus because we don't believe he's there. We all got caught up in our own mess and our own junk and we've let that blind us to the truth of God. Sometimes you need to shake yourself. You just need to shake yourself and get, get all that rustiness off of you. You need to just pull yourself into a place where, where you begin to say of yourself, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be what God wants me to be. You say, yeah, but the path that I'm on, Pastor, I, it's leading me to a hard place. Anybody ever just saw that you kept going the way you're going, it's going to get tough? It's not going to get easier, it's going to get tougher. You can't hardly watch the news and not come up with that anymore. Our whole world's getting tough. I love Paul, you know, Paul... It's is, is such a great example for all of us. But in Acts, the 21st chapter, he is determined within himself to get back to Jerusalem. And even though people are trying to talk him out of it, he said, no, I'm going to Jerusalem. And so in the 10th verse of the 21st chapter, it says, And as they tarried there many days, there came down from Judah a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come Unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound him uh, his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him unto the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they in, of that place besought him not to go unto Jerusalem. But Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready to be bound, not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. See, some people said, well, see, God tried to warn him not to go. No. God prepared him what to expect when he got there. 
There's a difference. How many of y'all know sometimes you need to know what you're getting into? Paul had to understand, you know what? Sometimes, hey, I'm in God's will. Everything ought to go right. Everything should be perfect because I'm in God's will. And God says, no, 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 no. I want you to understand there's going to be some trouble in my will for you. Because my will's not just to keep you safe. How many, how many of y'all know it's not about getting to the grave safe? So many of us, that's, that's our goal. I want to get to the grave safe. I want to tear down every demon in hell on my way to my grave. I, I, I want to be a troublemaker to the kingdom of hell. I, I just I want the devil to have a celebration when I die. I do. And I, I, I know that for me to do that means I got to set myself against him, which means he's going to be trying to destroy me. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you know what? I don't care because the God that I serve came to give me life. Devil can't steal my life. I am immortal and invincible till God says, come home. That's just the truth. That's a quote from Mikey Cheshire. And so I have to bring myself to that understanding that, that like Paul, Paul understood. And you know what happened when he got to Jerusalem? He was beat up, arrested, and then given over to the Gentiles. And you know what Paul didn't do? He never wavered. He hung on to his faith because God had already told him, this is going to happen. So when it happened, he said, oh, I'm in God's will because exactly what God said was going to happen is happening. How many of y'all know that God tells you, I want you to go to this place and get to this place? And you're in between places. Don't get freaked out because you're going through battles no hey I'm headed where God told me to head I'm going to be okay we're building the church God told us to build we got people coming back we got new people coming in some people left moved on God's going to use them where they are and we're going to build a church that's going to reach the entire world for Jesus Christ because that's what he called us to do his calling has not been diminished one little bit we're going to be exactly what God told us to be because God told us to be it. And in, and in all understanding, we have fought a lot of devils to get to this place. And I know that we're not at the end of this place. We still have some things to do. But we have the right people in the right place at the right time to deal with what we've got to deal with. God is working out for our good all this stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. No matter what comes on, no matter what happens, somebody said the other day, are, are you worried? I said, about what? Well, it's almost June. I will smack somebody. Am I worried because it's almost June? said, nope, I'm not. I made almost 30 years in Homa without a hurricane bothering my building. And then God said, you know what? I'm going to upgrade this building before we build the next. So we've got to go through this process. Not the way I would have done it. But God's doing the work, y'all. The church is going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. I know it's going to take me a little while to get this project done. So I know I ain't going nowhere for a while. Heaven or anywhere else. I'm going to be okay. God, hey, job security, y'all. <laughs> work it on what God said work on. It's when you quit being obedient, you're no longer useful. Be obedient. Do what God wants you to do. But I believe, I believe that, that this faith series that I've been doing is it's, it's, it's needed to, to jumpstart some of our faiths again. It's needed to push us into that place to understand what real faith is. Because I believe with everything inside of me that God has plans for all of us. I believe that God wants to do special things in all of us. He's waiting on us to be faithful. He's waiting on us to get ready. Some of us still putting on our socks and shoes. We need to get ready. He's not going to call you into the battle barefooted. He wants you to have the, the, the right shoes on for the right terrain so you can get through the process. But y'all, we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. 
every head bow, every eye closed. If my prayer team would come on and line up up here. Uh, I believe there's some people that just need somebody to pray with them that, that, that through faith that we would jumpstart our walks with God again, that by faith we just need to let God move and stir. Sometimes we just need God. But everyone that's in this building right now, right where you are, you, don't, you know, you, you don't have to do anything right now except just let God. Sometimes we just need to let God speak to us again we need to let God reassure us again I had to come and lay myself at the altar so God could speak to me again so I'm going to pray and then y'all can begin to make your way up here somebody's going to agree with you and pray with you Father I thank you that Lord God you are faithful and true Lord God I ask that you would touch the heart of your people that Lord God we would be what you want us to be and do what you've called us to do Father that you would let us keep our eyes on you and not on the stuff around us that Lord God we would not be overcome or cast down Father we ask that you would keep us in Jesus name would you stand to your feet all across the building if you need prayer make your way up here somebody's going to pray with you